the Fusion 360 nesting utilities did a nice job of taking sheet metal flat patterns and allowing them to be arranged for cutting in the manufacturing environment. Now that the nesting utilities have become a paid extension, they are inaccessible to some people. You may want to turn to the arrange command, but you'll find quickly that the arrange command does not recognize flat patterns. This video will show you a method to get flat patterns that can be used with the arrange command in the manufacturing environment. Let's get started. The creation of a flat pattern which can be used with the range command can be used with sheet metal bodies or sheet metal components. It doesn't matter. You don't have to have a flat pattern either. It does not use that. So let's get started. I've already made a few of these so I'm just going to convert one body and the sheet metal component to a flat pattern capable of being used in the range command. So the first one to do is a body. So what the first step is to go into the sheet metal environment and pick on the body's face that you want to unfold. Go to unfold command under modify and you can pick the automatic unfold all bins to make it quick. Once you've gone to this stage you can you shift back to the solid environment and use the boundary fill command. Pick on the flat unfolded pattern, select the one checkbox, and you want to make a new component. Say OK. Last thing you want to do is back in the sheet metal environment, refold. I'll leave it underneath the component of the body and move on to the component. Let's move now to the sheet metal component. Go to Sheet Metal, Unfold, and pick on the surface that you want to unfold from. Since I have the automatic all bends, it goes flat immediately. Now you want to shift back to the solid environment. Now at this point you can make it very quick so you will have to shift back and forth by adding the Boundary Fill command to the S key, Design Shortcut key. So you won't have to leave this sheet metal environment. Picking boundary fill, we pick on the flat layout, and then we pick on the checkbox and create a new component. Say OK, and then return to the refold, and we'll leave it right below the sheet metal component. I'll turn on the other two components that I made from this body and this sheet metal body, these two sheet metal bodies here. Now we have these and if you want to and you want to make more than one simply find the component that you want, right click on it and copy it. And then you want to paste it. Do not use paste new so if you make a change to the model it will update automatically. So you can have an extra one of one of the others for your arrangement. Now it's time to go to the manufacturing environment. In the manufacturing environment the next step is to make create a manufacturing model. Expand the manufacturing model and you want to turn off all the bodies and components that are not unfolded flat patterns. This includes all the bodies and I have one component right there that needs to be turned off. The next thing is to right click on the manufacturing model and edit it. What you want to do next is to draw your sketch which represents your sheet that you'll be arranging these pieces on. Now these are all one gauge. If you have multiple gauges you must keep them straight and arrange on different sketches. These are all 16 gauge so it doesn't make any difference to me. So I pick the sketch command. I'll pick on the plane and then I'm going to draw a sketch, a simple rectangle, 24 by 36. I'll use a fixed command to lock it in place. 
I'll finish my sketch. The next step is to use the arrange command. Under modify, pick arrange. Pick on all the flat layouts. It doesn't matter where you pick them. Then you want to pick your sheet or your sketch to represent your sheet. Set your spacings as you desire. I will put a half inch between each component. Do a preview. And then say OK. You now have your range ready to go. You might want to save at this point to be sure you don't lose any changes. Now I'm going to make a change to one of the components. I'll go back to the design environment and I'm going to unsuppress a hole I have in this component right here. So I'm going to unsuppress this feature. The hole is developed automatically and it will update in the model. Go back to the manufacturing environment and you'll see it updates automatically and appears in the flat pattern. So it's dynamically linked. If you make any changes to the design, they'll show up in their range. Before you go into the cutting cycle, you may decide you want a extra one of these particular flat layouts. You can do that very simply in the manufacturing environment. Right click on the manufacturing model, edit it, find that flat pattern, right click on it and copy it. Right click in the background and paste. Do not paste new because you want it identical. Move it off and say OK. Now you need to add that to the range, but since it occurred after the range, you need to drag it before. Now we can edit the range and simply add that component to the arrange feature. Just simply pick on it and say OK. You'll get a warning saying that your sheet's not big enough. So that's easy to take care of. Just go into the sketch and I'll increase this from 36 to 48. Finish my sketch. Go back to the range and try again. As you can see, it succeeds just fine. I'll finish my edit, then I want to set this up for cutting. So I'll right click on the manufacturing model and I'll pick create setup for manufacturing model. Now it's going to be picking up the other solids. Don't worry about that yet. On your setup, you want to make sure it's cutting. And then down here, you want to pick on where it says nothing model and pick on all the flat pattern pieces. This are restricted to a sheet. And if you would like to go back to your sheet and add something around the edges, you can. I'm going to add a half inch to all edges. And I'm also going to go back and set my box point to be down at the corner. Notice the sheet is smaller than my sketch. That is OK. It just will fit. Say OK. Next thing you want to do is go to cutting. You want to pick your tool. In this case, I'm going to use a water jet. You then want to pick your geometry. Check your box which says select same plane faces and then pick on one. You'll see it selects them all automatically. Say OK and you have your cutting layout. This cutting layout of course was to cut completely through. But let's say you would like to etch a part number on a, a particular model or all of them. 
I'll do one. I'll go back to the design environment and on this particular one right here I'm going to put a part number right on top of it. So I'll find that and make it active in the browser. I'll right click on this and create a sketch. I'll then take and pick up my text tool and I'm going to draw a box down here for my text. I'm going to make it quarter inch size and I'm going to put in a model just a, a part number such as A-23623 whatever and say OK. I'll finish my sketch. I'm going to save and go back to my manufacturing environment. In the manufacturing environment I'll find that text. I'll go to cutting. This one's going to be same tool but it's not going to be cutting through. It's going to be etching. I'll then pick on the geometry and pick on the text. Say OK and I'm all done. So this shows you how to use flat layouts in your with your range command to do cutting in Fusion 360. I hope you it helps a lot.